Hi, this is Prophet Lenina Naya, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Insights from Dr. Intimacy webcast, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, intimacy, and relationships from a holistic perspective, spirit, soul, and body. So glad you were able to join me again, and I am going to be continuing with my series on incubus and succubus sex demons. And this is session five. There are four videos that were recorded prior to this. And I definitely encourage you to go back and look at those four prior videos. This is actually session five. And on the last session, I left off talking about why incubi spirits want to induce nightmares. And we're gonna move on to another uh, another topic of study with these spirits. And we're going to deal with the question in this segment, where do they come from? How do these spirits get into your life? Because not everybody experiences these types of attacks. And as a matter of fact, people that don't experience these attacks may find it very strange or odd um, or unbelievable kind of for people that do experience it. So I would really like to talk about how these spirits get into your life so that if you are a person that is suffering from this or it might be your child or your husband or you may be called to some type of deliverance ministry, this knowledge is powerful. You need this information to help yourself and to help others. So let's study where these spirits uh, come from. Now let's remember that these, these are just spirits of sexual lust they're commonly referred to as incubus, succubus, spirit husband, spirit wife, marine spirit, sex demon, night demon. But at the end of the day, they are demons of sexual lust. These are spirits of perversion and lust. So I talked about lust quite a bit in my book that I'm studying from right now, the Spirits of Sexual Perversion reference book. There's an entire chapter dealing with lust so in depthly it is so empowering but here in this chapter i just give a brief definition of lust definition one lust is a desire for for illegal pleasure okay lust is a desire for for illegal pleasure definition number two lust is the willingness to meet a natural and legal need or desire in an illicit or sinful way so it's either a desire for illegal pleasure or a desire to meet something that's natural and legal, but to meet it in an illicit or illegal way. Um, the bottom line is this, lust is sin, and sin is disobedience to God's law of righteousness. This is what most people miss in the struggle for deliverance from night demons. There is some open door of disobedience in your life if these spirits are still able to afflict your body. So it's really important to remember these are lust demons and lust is sin. Lust is disobedience to Yahweh's will, to his righteousness, to his way. And so don't miss that. Don't, don't allow yourself to be the victim because there are so many people who love to be the victim and they don't want to participate in their own deliverance. And even some people feel like these spirits having a name, incubus, succubus, uh, spirit husband, spirit wife, allows them to feel sorry for themselves. Like they are the victim of these big old bad, powerful demons. But ultimately we're victims of our own sinful choices. And, and what happens to our lives when we make those choices for disobedience. So the truth is that no spirit can rape you. That means to forcefully do anything with your body unless you allow it to. That means that somehow you gave this demon access to you. And I know that's really hard to hear because you may be saying, no, I don't want these spirits here. But yeah, somehow through your disobedience, through some area of disobedience, rebellion, or lust in your life, you gave these spirits access to you. A spirit can't just come in and rape you 
Um, they don't have the access or the authority to physically afflict you that way. And that's why they are spirits. Um, and so what kind of disobedience can bring these type of spirits into your life? Any kind. Any type of disobedience whatsoever. It doesn't even have to do anything with sexuality. You don't have to be committing some type of sexual sin. If you are committing a sexual sin, then it's obvious. But you don't have to be committing a sexual sin to invite these demons to invade your body. Um, it can be any type of disobedience. And that part is, is the most difficult part for people. It, it, it's easy when the sin issues are apparent. You, you can say, okay, well, this is probably why this demon has come into my life. But when you don't have those apparent sin issues, when you don't have any sexual sin, obvious sexual sin in your life, people that are living the best that they know, how they, they feel like they're serving the Lord, they're doing everything right to the best of their ability, and they are still afflicted and attacked by these spirits. It's those people that are really perplexed and confused about why this is happening. But anybody that is, is involved in any type of disobedience, which is, hello, the whole world. <laughs> so anybody can have an open door for these spirits. Now, the, the enemy doesn't afflict everybody the same way. We all, he has access to anybody that is committing acts of disobedience, but he's going to afflict people in different ways. And so this is just one of the ways that he afflicts people that has doors of disobedience in their life. Um, and let's break that down a little bit more. Let's look at this scripture. And this is really to help those people that are in the church. There are a lot of ministers that go through this, prayer warriors, people that are in the five-fold ministry, people that are serving in ministry, people that are married. Now that everybody that is, is dealing with this has some type of other sexual issue, some people are really what we would consider a model Christians experiencing this. And so I want to help you particularly with this next statement. Um, let's look at the scripture here. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Okay. Now the term world in this scripture means the sin nature of the flesh and the carnal life as being separated from submission to God's Holy Spirit and his will. Let's say that again. The sin nature of the flesh and the carnal life as being separated from submission to God's Holy Spirit and his will. Your flesh is a part of the world. And the nature of your flesh is evil. It always has been. And it always will be. And that's really important to understand. So that means that the open door could be something that you're not doing. To subdue the nature of your flesh. Maybe you're not reading enough. You're not studying enough. You're not praying enough. It doesn't have to be something that you're doing. It could be something that you're not doing. Just to suppress and subdue that, that natural uh, sin nature that we all have. This physical body is a part of this world. It is a part of the cursed world. That's why these bodies die. Because they are part of the curse. It is the spirit that was renewed to life. It was the spirit of you resurrected to new life in Christ. And through that spirit, we have to put the sin nature of the flesh to death constantly. And so no matter how good you're trying to live, the sin nature of your flesh is not going to change. And if you're not doing enough to subdue that nature, if you're not doing enough to bring that sin nature subject to the will and the holiness of Yahweh, um, that can be an open door. It could, something that you're doing, of course, could be an open door. Sexual sin or living a life of compromise. There may be compromise in your life somewhere. There could be people around you that are engaged in, in sexual sin or other things that you know they shouldn't be involved in, but you allow yourself to fellowship and congregate with them without challenging that lifestyle or there could be something going on in your life 
that really represents a compromise to the principles of God's word. And that could be an open door as well. Uh, it could even be sin that only lives in your mind. Uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So even if you contemplate, now this doesn't mean a fleeting sinful thought. We all have fleeting sinful thoughts. But a sin that lives, notice what I said, sin that lives in your mind. This, this is something that you're contemplating, that you're desiring. Um, and if, if you could somehow do it, you might actually carry it out. So this is sin that you actually give thoughtful consideration to. Um, so these are some open doors um, that are really, really important for you to take note of because this can affect you no matter how uprightly you think you're walking. Any type of disobedience in your life can leave these doors open. And it seems to be, and there was even a study done on it, I saw on another website that I won't cite because um, I don't know if I'm quoting the information exactly exactly accurate, but the study that I read was saying that it is mostly Christian women that are attacked by these spirits. And, you know, it would be just like the enemy to come and try to undermine the faith of the godly. Why afflict those that are already participating in sexual sin? He's already got them. You know, he, he, you're already his slave if you are willfully participating in sexual sin. And so it, it's just like him to try to undermine the faith of the godly, to try to steal the virtue of somebody that is trying to live a godly life that wants to serve the Lord. He wants to take that away from you. He wants you, remember that these spirits come to make you feel worthless. He wants you to question your self-worth, your, your value to the body of Christ. He wants to redefine your self-perception. So don't think it's strange that you are living an upright life and these spirits are coming to afflict you. It is very intentional, very deliberate. You have to understand this warfare that we're fighting, I mean, we have a powerful enemy that is roaring, that roaming around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, whom he may, who gives him permission, that's what it means, whom he may devour, who's going to give him permission to devour him. So when he shows up for you, you have to say, oh no, you may not devour me. And so all of this information is really important, paying attention to those open doors. If you are truly serious about getting delivered from night demons, you are going to have to take accountability for not being in your place of authority over these spirits and allowing them access to you through your actions. Man, I just need to say that again. If you are truly serious about getting delivered from night demons, then you are going to have to take accountability for not being in your place of authority over these spirits and allowing them access to you through your actions. You have to be willing to really examine your heart and your lifestyle in the light of God's truth and find that open door. So this is your responsibility. You have to do it. You have to take accountability. You've got to find the open door. You can't continue to be the victim. Don't keep saying, I don't know how this is happening to me. I don't know what to do. No, I'm telling you what you need to do. You need to examine your own heart. The heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Jeremiah 5, 9. You've got to examine yourself. Find those open doors in the light of God's truth. Examine yourself and have him show you what is what is off in your spirit that is allowing these attacks to happen. Because once that open door is revealed, you can slam it shut in the name of Yeshua and by the power of his blood, never to be afflicted again. And if they ever do come back, you know how they got in. It's much easier to get victory if you're ever revisited. So that's going to be it for this segment of uh, Insights from Dr. Intimacy. I thank you for joining me and look forward to, to you joining me again on the next segment.